But on this particular website, it has a bunch of escorts. Women who, you know, will spend time with you and engage in other activities if you're willing to pay for their services. But what this sister pointed out as we looked at the information that she provided in the screenshots that she provided in this email was that you had a whole list of these escorts who after they described themselves you know gave you the parameters that you know you have to function by if you want to contact them um, you know what they look like yada 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 all these sisters, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, would always reference at the end of their ad, no black men allowed. Now this is not only coming from white females, this is coming from Asian females, it's coming from Hispanic females, it's even coming from your female, black women. And they always said the same thing. I'm an escort. If you pay me, I will do A, B, or C. But no Negroes allowed. And I sat back and I thought to myself, I'd be damned. <laughs> wow. I mean, all I could say is, you know, you mean to try to tell me That even the whore, I mean, I think it's it's safe, you know, that we know, we couldn't know, I mean, she's a female and she provides services for pay. And no matter what the person looks like, as long as they got that green, we can engage in A, B, or C. It don't make no difference. But I'm willing to do that with anybody and everybody but black men. Now I know some of you Negroes because I know that y'all going to deflect. And y'all going to say, well I don't care what an escort has to say. And it don't matter. She's, you're missing the point. You're missing the point, brother. If, if that's your position, you've missed it. If your position is, well she's a whore. I don't care what whores think. You've missed it. Because it's not just whores who are saying this to your black ass. And I've told y'all this and you've looked at my last video clip that you have to see to believe. The, the Valentine's Day edition. If you've seen that video, you know what I'm talking about. Because these women are telling you, we don't want your black ass. We don't want you. I want women in the in the case of Kristalyn Karazin, I believe that's her name, and she is a staunch supporter. She's even went so far as to wrote a book. Engaging black women to date white men or other ethnic groups. Another sister, I can't recall her name, but another sister wrote a book, The Key to a White Man's Heart. The Black Female's Guide to Dating White Men. I mean, these are the sisters that y'all defend. So on one hand, on one end of the spectrum, we have what would appear to be college-educated black females who are encouraging other black females to date white men or other ethnic groups. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have escorts who the name speaks for itself but yet and still even though I'm in this thing for money I don't want your money and if you can't see this as a slap in your black face I'm not really sure what it's going to take to slap you and wake you up they don't want your black ass they don't 
So why are you spending your time defending someone who does not want you? Why are you spending your time trying to impress someone who don't want you? Why are you spending your time bickering and arguing with other black men trying to impress black females and these very same black females are telling other black women, look, get you a white man. Get you an Asian guy. Get you a guy, a Hispanic guy. Get you anybody but one of these Negroes. And then you have, on the opposite end of that spectrum, you have escorts who are paid for sexual favors. And even though they're in it for the money, they preface the fact that, listen, I, yeah, I want the money, I need the money, but guess what? I don't want the money from you. Because it's something that these women understand. That yes, you may have the money to pay for my services, but everything else that I stand at risk to acquire dealing with you, I would rather not deal with. This is the reason why they say it on their ass. No black men. No Negroes allowed. And for you brothers who going to sit back and try to deflect and say, well, those are whores and that don't matter what a whore think and, and she, I don't care. No, no, brother, because it's just not whores. This is what they're saying. This is the reason I told you, brothers, y'all have become the laughing stock of civilization, man. I mean, when you look at black men, I mean, yeah, I have to say this. <laughs> I gotta say this. Dude, we, we're talking about grown men, not children. These are grown men engaging in buffoonery. And I'm not talking about you disagreeing with somebody. That's fair game. I'm talking about the endless cat fights, the endless bickering, the en endless arguing. I mean, these Negroes going on Facebook, getting people's family members, talking about them in video. I mean, this is a grown fucking man that's doing this shit. I know some guys who are in high school who don't behave like this. I know some brothers who are still in high school who have mastered and understand that if I don't agree with that brother and I can't see eye to eye with him, I'm not going to deal with him. This is a guy still in high school who has grasped this very simple concept. But you got grown men who can't get it. And they will spend every moment that they can on social media attempting to impress a group of females who don't care nothing about your black ass. No Negroes allowed. And this is coming from females who are escorts. That in and of itself should tell you the image of black men in 2015. That should tell you right now how people are looking at you and how they are saying, you know, that it's not worth it. It's not worth the effort. It's not worth the headache. It's not worth it. This is the reason why I told y'all in my other video, and I know some black women didn't like it. And I told y'all, listen, all you sisters running around here talking about y'all going to get y'all a white man, that's fine if that's what you want to do. But now, <laughs> ain't no white guy going to put himself into that meat grinder trying to deal with you knowing that you've dealt with a bunch of these dysfunctional black men. He's not going to do it. He's just not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Now, if you're cute, it is what it is. But he's not going to get in a relationship with you and he most certainly is not about to marry you knowing that this is what you've dealt with. That's the reason why I told y'all the one female or one group of black women who have a shot 
if that's what she wants, and getting married or having a white man put a ring on her finger is a black female who's never dated black men. It's just something she hasn't done. Now, she has a shot. But if you have children with one of these brothers, if you have endless relationships with these brothers, it's a wrap. It's a wrap for you. This is the reason why those escorts are telling you, listen, I'm in this thing to make money, but I don't want your money. Because what you're bringing to the table, all of that dysfunction, all of that effeminate behavior, all of that catty, gossipy violence and, and just illogical behavior, I don't even want to deal with that. So you keep your money. So you got some old white guy, you know, who's running around and, and, and you know, a truck driver and they will deal with him. They will go and deal with him and take his money. But they don't want your money. And you Negroes are going to sit back. I know what y'all are going to do because I know y'all. I've studied you Negroes for over 20 years. I know exactly what y'all are going to think. Y'all are going to sit back and y'all are going to miss this. Because y'all are going to think, well, those are just whores. Why should I care what a whore has to say? You just don't get it. It's flying right over your head. This is the prevailing image of black men in 2015, man. I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all brought this on yourselves. Y'all, for the most part, are a dysfunctional group. And people are saying this. And all you have to is, it's not hard to spot it. It's not hard to spot that there is something seriously wrong with the majority of black men. It's not hard to spot. It's not. And for the people who take the time to analyze it and look at it, they see there's something wrong with this. There is something wrong with this type of behavior emanating from fucking grown men, 35, 40, 45, 50 years old. What the fuck are you Negroes going to tell a teenager? How can you sit a teenager down and talk to him and mentor him once you look at your behavior on social media? What you going to tell him? What you going to say? When you Negroes are in separate cities, y'all don't know each other, never met each other, but yet y'all will set up times and dates not to meet up and link up and, and try to do something positive or create some kind of an organization to deal with mental. No, y'all don't want to do that. Y'all want to meet up to fight. Y'all want to shoot and kill each other over YouTube videos and opinions. But yet many of these same Negroes will tell us that they're concerned about black folk. They call everybody who does not engage in that kind of behavior a coon. You a coon. Uh, what, what, it, it, what, what do you call the Negroes who's bickering back and forth endlessly? What is that? Is that positive? And people are viewing your behavior, Negro. And this is the reason why you have escorts who are, oh, even though they are here for the money, are telling you, I don't want your money, Negro. I don't care how much money you make. You can't pay me enough to deal with you. And that's what you have to see. No Negroes allowed. <laughs> and you Negroes brought this on yourself. You can't blame nobody else for this. You did this. Y'all did this. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's so dysfunctional. I remember and I spoke when I was speaking with Crazy 100. And I'm going to end this video with this because I don't want to go too far because I want to save some of this for our private masterpiece uh, when we deal with the ghetto gaggers and the pro-blacks. But I remember when I was talking to Crazy 100 and I told him, I read a comment on one of his videos and the person talked about how the things he was saying in his video how white supremacists are going to have a field day with that and I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself okay so white supremacists or people who look down on the Negro are going to have a problem with this but what are, they're not going to have a field day with Negroes pulling guns on each other they're not going to have a field day with Negroes brandishing uh, dope on videos. 
They're not going to have a problem with Negroes getting on videos calling each other nigga and talking about each other's wives, talking about each other's children. They, that makes y'all look good in the eyes of white, since y'all so concerned about what white folks think now. Because that's what y'all say, right? They're going to have a field day with that, but they're not going to have a field day with this. I mean, it makes no sense. It makes no sense, but I'm going to say it again. You black men, for the most part, and don't come at me with that bullshit and that straw man argument talking about, well, you talking about all black men. How could I be talking about that when the two brothers that's producing these masterpieces, Equation 100 and myself, are black men? I mean, last time I checked. And I know other black men who does not fit this criteria. And I told Equation 100, I have never seen grown men behave like this in this dysfunctional manner until I started making YouTube videos. I've never seen this shit. I've never seen it. Because one, for one, I don't associate with Negroes like that. This is the reason why I told some of them Negroes, listen, man, you, you are the type of Negro that if I seen walking down the street, I would cross the street to avoid you. Not out of, out of fear, but out of the fact that I don't even want to breathe the same air that you breathe. That's how much you Negroes disgust me with y'all's behavior, y'all endless cat fights, gossiping, talking about each other, cooning and buffooning. And, and this is the reason why those escorts said, listen, no Negroes allowed. <laughs> yeah, and many of y'all going to miss this. Y'all really are. Because at the end of the day, A man is supposed to have confidence. A man is supposed to set standards. A man is supposed to set the guidelines. He's supposed to set the pace. I don't give a damn what woman doesn't like what I got to say. Because I will gladly and proudly tell any woman there's certain things that I do not do. I do not chase women. I do not praise pussy. I do not bow down and become... No, that's just not what I do. No, not for one goddamn second. You see, the women out here... They have all different means of validation. Some of the means of validation that they have are you simp-ass Negroes on a daily basis complimenting them every single day. Because I'm a firm believer in, in certain cases you're going to have success and other cases you're going to have a loss. When you have success, run with it. When you have your losses, cut all losses and move on. That's simple. Not every woman that you deal with are you necessarily going to be that successful with. So you have to know when to cut all ends. And this is an example of this. And I've seen too many of these damn videos where, and, I, and I've seen this, not even in videos, but I've seen this in person where you Negroes will sit here. And in my video, this is going to pertain predominantly to black men, but I know there's men of other races that fit the description as well, but I'm going to keep this with black men. It troubles me deeply when I see a conglomerate of you silverback gorillas staggering around on a street corner. And every chance you get, every female that walks past you, here you are complimenting her, trying to holler at her, trying to get her attention. In many different cases, these females don't even talk, respond to you. They won't even stop to acknowledge you. They won't even take the time to look at your dusty ass. But yet, your black ass sitting on a corner chasing this hoe. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck is wrong with you? You have no standards when you do this. You lost all your standards because you pretty much show that you're a weak-ass Negro. Now, there's nothing wrong with initiating and, and, and trying to start a conversation. I'm all for that. But you don't run around flooding her and showering her with a bunch of compliments. That's some weak-ass shit. No one would respect that. But this is what many of you Negroes did, do. An example of this is I looked at a video on Facebook, and it was a sister that was using her phone camp, uh, her cell phone camcorder to record some Negro, some some some. <laughs> Let me try to be a little bit respectful in this video. But she was recording this monkey, following her, even after she did not respond to him, even after she told him, you're creepy, you're disrespectful, you don't know how to take no for an answer. She won't even address him. And the monkey's, what's your name? Can I get your name? I don't have a name, monkey. Where you from? Nowhere, monkey. This is what she told the ape, and the silverback is still following her. And I, I, listen, man, I got to be disrespectful at this point in time because that's weak-ass shit. 
that's some weak ass shit. This is how a lot of you Negroes are. Y'all are fucking weak. And this is why women do not respect you. This is why your black woman don't respect you. Because every chance you get, you are lusting after her. You are chasing under her like some, some weak ass fucking puppy dog. You have no standards, Negro. And you sit back and you, you put yourself to be strung along like a goddamn buffoon. And then you wonder why you are looked at the way you are. You wonder why your black woman don't come out and respect your black ass when you make videos talking about you defending her. Or why you think she's beautiful or what you love about black women. You wonder why they don't even look at those damn videos. This is another reason why I get on camera and I say whatever the fuck I want about these bimbos because I know just how disingenuous they are. I understand their mindset. I have learned how to comprehend the things that I don't even agree with. So this is why I can understand their position. I can pick apart their position and I can explain to you what they're doing before they even know what the fuck they have done. But this is just the way I work. And I try to share these gems with you Negroes so y'all can understand this loud and clear in case you encounter this, you know how to deal with it. You know how to counteract it. Now, here's the deal. A lot of these women have a conclave of simps, lames, and manginas to validate them, worship them, kiss their ass every chance they get. So this becomes redundant to them. It's no surprise to them. This is why I don't believe in doing the shit y'all do. And you got simps like Steve Harvey, Martin Lawrence, the rest of these buffoons back in the 90s who made these uh, sitcom shows. And I'm going to specifically talk about Steve Harvey. I want to reference him specifically. Because when I look at stuff like this, this becomes, and this, and the reason why I got to say this is because he's an ultimate simp. Many of y'all know this, you know about these books he's been putting out, you know that this is the flat out ultimate simp. As a matter of fact, I seen a commercial not too long ago and he was sitting there telling guys, you got to earn the cookie, you got to earn this. <laughs> you serious? This boy had his shine is sitting there trying to give people relationship advice. Now, from what I understand, his first book came out back in 2009. That's where relationships, where black relationships are to this day. Have they gotten any better? From what I see, no. But, you know, Steve Harvey's under the impression that somehow his books, well, they're making him money, so I guess I can somewhat understand his angle, angle to a, de a degree. But I'm getting off a subject here. The reason why I want to reference this show, because if you looked at the Steve Harvey show, this came out back in the 90s, the sitcom he had. Here you had a simp who was working for a school as a school, a music school teacher who was chasing after this woman for years. Chasing after a woman who rejected him, who disrespected him, who never gave him the time of day. I think it was some of the final episodes where they finally got together. I'm talking about this lady, Regina. Because when you spend your time chasing after a woman for years on end, being in the friend zone for years on end, guess what? If you finally succeed at getting her, after she done been ran through by all these different dudes, and, the sh and everyone else gets a turn at her or a crack at that ass before you do, guess what? In my eyes, the value of this bitch is plummet. Shot. Not worthy. I, I have no reason to fuck with you. You don't have any value as far as I'm concerned. But only a simp will sit back and allow this shit to go on. A simp will sit back and be comfortable with this because a simp has no standards. A simp has no backbone. They don't demand anything out of a damn woman. This is why these females can run around doing whatever the fuck they want and you simps sit back and you allow it to go on and you don't check this hoe. And it's simple. Once you know about keeping value or maintaining value, it's the same thing if I go out and I do a contracting job and, and someone says, well, I would gladly pay you for a contracting job that you did tomorrow Two years later, fuck that, no deal, no deal, mm -mm, we ain't got nothing to talk about, no deal, no, mm -mm. because if I got to wait that long to get my money, guess what, it's not valuable to me, it's just pointless, why should I do it in the first place, but you simps, lames, and manginas don't deal with it like that, and I can tell you this much, the best way you're going to learn to overcome this bullshit that women put you through, is you have to learn how to simply not give a fuck. Now, I'm not saying don't give a fuck about women. No, what I'm saying is when you first encounter them, you need to not give a fuck. Meaning you're not tying your emotions into her before you even get to know her. Let, the same way she's making you prove yourself to her, she needs to prove herself to you. Even the playing field just a bit. But that's the problem with a lot of y'all. Y'all don't know how to do this. So when I see these brothers on social media chasing after these women, following these women for blocks on end, trying to get their numbers, the female don't respond to your black ass, but yet you still running behind her chasing her like a fucking simp. Dude, there is something wrong with that picture. 
What I can tell you is you are an embarrassment to all fucking men. You are a flat out embarrassment. You're an embarrassment. I can't respect that. I can't take it seriously. But a lot of these soft ass Negroes will spend their time doing this. Y'all literally will go about trying to convince women to want to be with you. If you just give me the time of day, you know, I can show you how good of a man I can be. I've had women tell me this. They've told me that you simp ass Negro, that this is what y'all do. Listen, man, I don't believe in. <clears throat> Let me rephrase that. There's three things I would never do. Number one, I don't chase no goddamn woman. And it's not because I feel I'm the shit and she got to go and chase me. No, no, no. I believe it has to be a mutual street, a two-way street. I don't chase no fucking female. Number two, I don't praise no pussy. There ain't no damn pussy that good in all the goddamn world that's going to have me praising it or begging for no damn pussy. Go fuck yourself. I don't do that shit. You got the wrong damn dude. That's how that work. And number three, I don't believe in convincing a woman to date me. I don't believe in telling a woman, if you give me the time of day, I can show you if you just fuck that shit, bitch. I ain't got time for that. If you ain't see me as the object of your affection, then guess what? I move the fuck on. It's that simple. And many of y'all need to develop that attitude when you deal with women. You ain't gonna be successful with every single endeavor that you encounter, but you have to know when to cut, cut all losses and keep it pushing. That's simple. I'm not gonna go out my way, oh, fuck you, bitch. That's why you owe me. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Don't waste your time doing that shit. Hey, nice knowing you. I'm going to keep it moving this way. That's it. That's it. Show that you got some kind of self-control. But like I said, many of you Negroes, y'all get irrational. Y'all get just as emotional as these goddamn females. And this is why y'all do what y'all do. So with that being said, let me reference this story with Steve Harvey. Or oh, one particular episode that I've noticed. And if you looked at the Steve Harvey show, you know the episode I'm talking about. There was a point in time where he was chasing after this young lady, Regina, who was the principal of the school that he worked for. And like I said, she was going on all these dates with other dudes. And there was one particular episode where this dude was like, I'm going to hit her with the two hit combo, the one hit a quitter. And I forgot what it was. One of them, I think, was taking her out somewhere. And then the next step was cooking a meal for her. And he said, once I cook these meals, them panties come right off. I'm going to be in that ass. I'm going to be knee deep in them guts. The simp that Steve Harvey was, he decides, well, no, how could this happen? Because he could not stand the thought of the next man pumping penis, pumping some beef inside of the woman that he initially wanted that would not give his black ass the time of day. So what he ends up doing is he rushes over to the house at two or three in the morning to try to prevent this. I got to prevent this from happening. There's no way I can let this happen. Oh, no. So he shows his black ass up over there. No, you got to get him out your house, piggy. You can't have him here. Mind you, the dude wasn't even there. But despite his efforts, when she seen his soft, weak, simp ass come over to his house, trying to, 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 to uh, prevent what could have taken place that night, she looked at the simp ass and said, man, Negro, get your simp ass the fuck up out of here showing up in my house at 2 in the damn morning. I'm a grown-ass fucking woman. Now, I know what some of you Negroes are going to say if you actually watched that episode. You say, well, later on in the episode, she forgave him. And no, that's not what I'm talking about. We ain't going to run with that. The point that I'm making here is here you had a simp who was so afraid of this woman fucking another guy. The next guy putting his penis inside of this female. And what I'm trying to tell you Negroes is, listen... If that woman is going to fuck somebody else, she's going to fuck somebody else. There ain't not a goddamn thing you can do about this. You're not going to prevent it. You're not going to stop it. As a matter of fact, you trying to prevent it might only furthermore make it happen. What you need to understand is this much. If you're going to deal with a woman, you present how you feel. You shouldn't be telling her or falling head over heels in love with her right away. But you can present, hey, you know, I'm interested in you and I'd like to date you and get to know you and see where it goes. You lay, it out on, you lay it out on the line, and how she responds to it is how she responds to it. If she jumps at it, cool. If not, keep it moving. If she decides she's going to put you on the back burner and let all these other dudes have their way with her, and then once that's all said and done, now she's going to come back and get you, you're a fucking simp if you allowed it to go on. Because the longer you waited for her, when it's been years on end, you've been waiting, waiting, waiting your turn, and now she finally wants to give you the chance after she done been worn out, fuck that shit. No, I'm not wasting my time doing that. But this is how a lot of you Negroes think. And I'm trying to tell you, that's not the way you think. Listening to Steve Harvey, you see these black females are going to listen to his stupid ass books. 
And even though it has not helped them, they still gonna go out there and buy his simp ass material. They believe setting standards is by demanding men to open car doors for them. <laughs> even though that really don't do shit. <laughs> it just shows that you have petty standards and petty demands. And when it comes down to real things, you don't really have your head on straight. But that's for another subject. <laughs> But I'll tell you this much right now. And I'm going to leave y'all with this before I go. When you lose power, and this goes for men and women, is when you get involved in a situation where you start talking to somebody, or you give somebody your number, or you exchange numbers with that person, and you go into that situation where you have more of an interest in that person than they do of you. That's the next thing I don't believe in doing. I don't believe in dealing with a woman that I have more interest in her than she does for me. No deal, as far as I'm concerned. No deal. As far as I'm concerned, it needs to be a two-way street. As much as I call you is as much as she should be calling me. That's simple. If she's not calling you, there's a problem. You might want to consider leaving that situation alone. As much as I want to see you is just as much as you should want to see me. If it's not that way, then you need to consider leaving that situation alone. That's simple. Because the minute you go into a situation and you have more interest or higher hopes with her, you get excited every time she calls you, you answer on the first ring, guess what? She ain't taking you seriously. Because she knows at any given time, she can drop your black ass off on a curb and keep it moving. And guess what? Anytime she want to come back in that picture, into that equation, after she done pulled the little funky ass shit she done pulled, she feels she can be able to do it. And she can come back in that picture. And it's supposed to be no repercussions behind the actions of what she did prior to that. And if you were to confront her on it, she's going to look at you and say, Negro, you out your damn mind. You should feel lucky that I'm contacting you. This is how these hoes think. So when I look at these Negroes, in conclusion, when I look at these Negroes and I realize that many of y'all don't have a spinal column. Many of y'all don't know how to set standards. Many of y'all don't have limitations to what you will not deal with. When you hear a man tell a woman... Listen, I'm simply not interested. That's a man that has confidence within himself. That's a man who thinks he's the shit. I feel that way about myself. I'm the shit. I don't give a fuck who like it or not. And it's not in the means of being arrogant, like I'm God's gift to women. No, I just think I'm the shit. Doesn't make me feel entitled to nothing. Doesn't mean I feel I deserve certain things. No, I just feel I'm the shit. That's it. I'm the man. That's it. If a woman's going to get with me, you're going to deal with me on my level. Because I'm not dealing with childish games and I'm not dealing with foolishness. I ain't got time for that because I already know where it leads. And this is why I will not entertain it. And the same mindset that men like me develop. And there's something else I want to reference too from the, uh, the brother David Carroll, also known as the intellectual juggernaut. And there's something that he says, and though it has me rolling every time he says it. And we all know he loves to smoke his cigars. Now, I'm not a, uh, I don't smoke, nor will I ever be, and I ain't got nothing against anyone who does it. But there's something that is absolutely hilarious when he says this. And he pulls out his cigar, and, he's, and he takes a whiff of it and says, mm, This right here is better than a 90-inch ass stuffed in a mini skirt, <laughs> in a pencil skirt, in high heels. <laughs> that right there. That right there, you know, and I'm not telling you, brothers can learn a lot from that. And not by smoking the cigars, but the fact that he can say, well, you know what? The point that he's making is this, pussy ain't that significant to me. It's not. It's not. I'd rather be smoking my motherfucking cigars rather than worrying about that 90-inch floppy ass stuffed in a mini skirt, uh, a pencil skirt, and high heels. And that's how a lot of you brothers need to think. A lot of you brothers run around spending the majority of your time worrying about how you're going to impress some female instead of worrying about how you're going to impress yourself. This is why women don't respect you because they know everything that you do is based off of impressing them and how you're going to appeal to them. This is why they don't respect your black ass. This is why when they look at your lame asses running around trying to approach them, they don't say nothing to you. And I'll give you some examples. I know what it's like to do to be on some lame shit because I used to do, be on some shit like that myself. And this is one thing I don't do. And I've, I just, I've said this is something I'm never going to do and I stopped doing it a while ago. I don't buy drinks for women at clubs or lounges or any public place where I'm just first now meeting them. Now, many women will sit back and try to argue with me. What's wrong with buying a drink? It's just a drink. It's just, and this is what they're going to argue. This is the basis 
And this is the focal point off of their argument. It's just a $5 drink. It's just a $10 drink. It's just a $15 drink. No, that's not what it is to me. It's the principle. It's the principle. And I'll give you an example of something I went through two nights ago. I went out to a lounge. Some of y'all might have heard of this uh, lounge in Harlem, Red Rooster. I went there on Friday night. Decided I'm going to go in there and take me a look and see what's going on with this environment. So I get in there. And I had no intentions on dancing with women. I just wanted to just change the scenery. I wanted to find a little corner I could post up on and just post and just chill. And just watch what was going on. That's it. Now a black female comes along. Looks at me. Now mind you I had seen her coming into that club with a white guy earlier. Not that it has much to do with the story. I just figured I'd put it out there. So now I see her coming along to me. And she says hi. And we get to talking and shortly we start dancing. Now this all took place within about five to seven minute time frame. Within about the five to ten, seven minute time frame, you know, this woman is, you know, she's dancing or whatever, and then decides to suddenly ask me to buy her a drink. And I'm thinking to myself, and I said this to myself years ago, the next time that happens, this is what I'm going to do. So I, this, is, this is exactly what I did. I asked her, what are you drinking? She said, get me a wine. So I go to the bar, all right, I'll be right back. Go to the bar, and I tell the bartender, I say, get me a cranberry juice on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> because mind you now, I'm driving, so I ain't gonna drink and drive. Fuck that. And I sit there and I have my drink, and I'm sitting down at the bar, just chilling. I see her later on down in the uh, night, looking for me or wondering where I went. And I'm sitting there laughing to myself, like this bitch literally thought I was gonna buy her a drink. Now, if this happens again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be upfront and say, no, I don't buy bitches drinks. I'm not doing that. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, and this is why I find it tacky. Now, the baseline and the focal point that women are going to argue is that why are you complaining about a 5 or $10 drink? No, it's the principle that I'm complaining about. First of all, I'm sick and tired of listening to you funky females run around talking about how independent you are, how much money you make, what you got, how much career and degrees you have, but yet you in public places asking strangers for drinks, to buy you drinks. Why can't you go out and buy your own damn drink if that's what you want? You see, anything that I want, I work hard for. That's simple. That's what I believe in. That's just my philosophy. If I want something that bad, I work hard to get it. I wanted this fucking vehicle that I'm sitting in right now, so I work hard to get it. That's simple. I'm not going to ask the next person, hey, can I drive your car? I never do that. That's not me. I sit in the passenger seat and keep my damn mouth shut. Okay? If I wanted that bad, I got to step up my game and I'm going to get it. Getting off subject here, but to get back on point, it's disgusting and disturbing to me that a random female who doesn't know me, who feels just because we might have spoken or just because we might have danced, that suddenly you're entitled to asking me to buy you a drink. First of all, it's tacky, number one, to ask a stranger that you don't know to ask any damn man to, to give you something, a handout, especially when you don't know him. That's just lame. That's fucking lame. I'm sorry. Then number two, if I really wanted to buy you a drink, allow me to offer. Don't go asking somebody to buy you shit. That just makes it seem like you're trying to validate yourself and try to show your significance. The fact that I can get a man to buy me a drink, not by him offering, but by me asking a complete fucking stranger to buy me a drink. Like, where does that work? How does it work like that? And I've been down that route before. And I'll say this much. That shit has never worked for me, ever. And I will not do it again. And the simple reason why I say this is because if you didn't walk in that club with me hand in hand, then I'm not buying you a drink as an icebreaker. If you're not going to talk to me, fuck it. No sweat off my back. I'm good to go. I didn't care to talk to anybody any goddamn way. I just wanted to get out of the house. Or I'll just go find other women to mingle with. That's simple. So buying drinks is out the goddamn question. Now it's not to say that I won't buy a drink. But if I'm buying a woman a drink, that, that means she's walking into this location with me and she is leaving with me. Basically, what I have a guarantee of is her undivided attention. I'm not buying you a drink as a gamble. Fuck that shit. If that's what you're thinking, you out your damn mind. But this is how a lot of them think. And this is just something that I don't go for. But a lot of these men, they'll sit back and they'll be buying drinks and then they'll wonder why. And I've seen guys... Countless. I remember why I went out years ago with a dude and every chance I turned around he was at the bar again bringing another chick to the bar buying him or buying them drinks now mind you the majority of the females at this place were butt ugly 
the lack of respect that these bust down but ugly bimbos were giving me, not only me but him, didn't warrant nobody buying him, none of these hoes drinks. But yet, the type of dude he was, was going about buying drinks. Now I know what you Negroes are going to say. You try to compensate or to, to make yourself feel good because you know you look like a, a complete fucking idiot at this point in time. The way you make yourself feel good is you say, well, I got money and it ain't no thing because I got money. You know, it's not a problem. You got money. You can go and buy a drink. No, that's just the means to compensate your lame ass stating the fact that you don't have the means to talk to nobody. You don't have no substance about you that attracts a woman to you. So this is the reason why you go out and you buy drinks because you figure I got money. There ain't nothing. So I'm just going to buy drinks for a female. Meanwhile, she ain't leaving with you. She probably won't even talk to your lame ass after you done bought her that, that damn drink. And this is what many of you Negroes don't understand. And this is why I say, and once I've experienced going through that shit, I said never again. Because we are at a point in time where we have to learn and grow the fuck up. And I had to learn and grow the fuck up for myself. So these are just things that I don't do. And I'm not going to sit there and compensate because anybody can go in there with 5 or $10, 15 $20 buying a goddamn drink. That ain't shit. So when I listen to the Negro, hey, I got money like this, so I can go and buy a drink. No, no, that's just a lame excuse to cover up for the fact that you're a fucking lame. And this is what you need to use to get an angle with women. It's weak. Now, it's not to say that if a man wants to use money as his angle to get women, then by all means, go ahead. But if you have not set no standards, no limitations, no expectations, and you allow this hoe to run over you any way she feels like it, dude, you're fucking lame.